My name is Naz Dardashti, and um, I'm what I, I guess what I learned recently in the past two months, I'm what you call a spiritual transformative experiencer, STE. And uh, it was wonderful to hear Ms. Atwater talk about the similarities of ND years because I kind of do feel a little left out that I haven't had the near death. And, uh, but all the similarities apply to me, almost all, 9 out of 10. And one thing that she said is that um, children excel, especially if those are the ones that had a traumatic birth. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's me. When I was born, um, apparently I had the umbilical cord around my neck, and when my mom was delivering me, I guess I was suffocating. And, uh, and luckily, you know, the doctor found out in time and told her to stop pushing, and, and then here I am. So, but that's a traumatic birth there for you. Um, my earliest memory is uh, as a child as being two years old and my brother, my four-year-old brother was trying to potty train me and he took me to the bathroom and pointed to the toilet and said, you pee in here, you pee in here. And he goes, watch me. So he pulled down his pants, he aimed and he peed right into the toilet. And I'm looking here and I have two older brothers and you know, I'm an overachiever. If he could do it, I could do it. <laughs> so I pulled down my diapers, I aimed and I peed. And I couldn't understand why his went directly into the toilet and mine went down my leg. <laughs> and I realized I'm missing some plumbing. And I was traumatic and it was like a kind of like a little out of body there. But I remember being shocked. I'm like, ah! What's wrong with me? So that was two. Um, <laughs> um, my earliest experience with um, spirits was when I was, again, I was in Iran until I was five. So it was when I was in Iran, probably three to four years old, I'm sleeping, I'm sharing a room with my brothers, and two children's spirits came. Uh, they were giggling, and they came by my bed. <clears throat> one of them stayed on my right and the other one uh, went down to the left side of, of the bed by my foot. And the, the one on the left uh, was giggling and smiling and laughing, and the one on the right kissed me on the cheek. And I'll never forget that. And the feeling is, uh, when a spirit would come, is the vibration, the energy. I would feel the energy. Kind of like how it was uh, back in the 80s when the TV was on for a very, very long time, and you turn off the TV, when you bring your hand near the TV, there's that vibration that's exactly what I felt uh, in Iran when they kissed me. And, uh, but always I thought it was just a dream. Always, it's just a dream. And then I would dream uh, the future, things would happen, and I'd say, oh, it's just my brain making things up. And um, I would always dismiss it. I had my first real out-of-body experience when I was in ninth grade, so I was uh, 14 years old, and there's a boy that I really, really liked. And I was walking with my girlfriend on the bridge, and the door opened, and he came out and grabbed me and kissed me. And I was so happy. I left my body, and I'm watching, and I'm flying around us, and I'm watching him kiss me so, like, passionately. And while I'm circling and watching, I see another kid um, come out of the door with a red backpack and pass by us. Now, when, when he was kissing me, my eyes were closed the whole time. And then when he stopped kissing me, I opened my eyes. I couldn't help but turn to see if I saw that person with the red backpack. And sure enough, he was right behind me. And I was like, wow, what a kiss. <laughs> But I still didn't think it was an out-of-body experience. Again, I thought I'm imagining the whole thing. Um, years went by, and, and the phone would ring, and I know who's, who's calling, and so on and so forth. So many experiences. By the time I hit 29, uh, I guess I, my sexual peak, I knew by 29 things started changing. I, I, I really felt like I hit my sexual peak, because things just changed all over. And um, I was sleeping, and uh, this is one of my first profound experiences. When, while I was sleeping, I felt myself elevated, elevating up, and uh, I was floating. And uh, I noticed hundreds and hundreds of spirits walking past by me. Not walking, they're actually floating past by me. They're floating past by me, and I feel all their energies. And I just put my hand out like this, just feeling their energy. I was like, oh my god, this feels amazing. And this one woman, her hand went through my hand. And then I, I felt this surge of energy between us, and it kind of startled me. And I said to myself, is this for real? Because I still thought I was dreaming. I said, is this for real? 
And I turned back and just thinking to myself, and she picked up my thoughts and she said, yes, this is for real. And, and when I looked behind, I'm like, where's everyone going? Because everyone's facing me and passing me. So I'm like, where's everybody going? And that's when I saw the white light. And I'm like, oh, so there is a light. That's the light that everyone's talking about. And then, of course, then I freaked out. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Wake me up. And I woke up, and I just whoop, came right back to myself. And then I said, OK, this is what I'm experiencing is in a dream. It's not my own thoughts. Something real is happening here. Um, my second profound experience was um, I have a cousin named Elliot. And Elliot, as a child, when he was a toddler, very happy boy. Um, his parents always argued, always fought. Growing up, he, he was always angry, always frustrated, and always frowning. Even if he said hi, I'm like, hi, Elliot. He'd be like, hi, hi. <laughs> always, just angry child. I, and I don't blame him. You know, his, growing up, his dad would also sometimes hit his mother. And uh, so it was a very hard time for him. When he was in high school, he got into uh, drugs and uh, you know uh, the wrong crowd and started smoking marijuana and we saw him going down the wrong path. We're all very worried. And um, when he graduated high school, he, he and another cousin decided to move to San Diego for college. And then he was no longer, he was out of his parents' home for the first time. Things changed. He stopped doing drugs. He started doing well in school. He, for, for once in his life, he had a career goal. He wanted to be an attorney. He's getting good grades. We're like, good job, Elliot, good job. So uh, one, one evening when he was in San Diego, he was driving with his girlfriend. They were running late somewhere. He missed his exit and tried to make the exit and hit the center divider. She wore her belt. She survived. He didn't have his belt, flew out of the window, and died instantly. 19 years old, just when things were changing. Very devastating. I was extremely angry. How could you die now? Things are changing, things are getting better, how could you die now? So every time I go visit his cemetery or visit his burial, I, his grandmother's there, his grandfather's there, my grandmother's there, I'd say hi to everyone, tell them what's going on. Every time I got to Elliot, you couldn't just keep driving, you couldn't go to the next exit, angry every time, how could you die? Once, twice, three times. After a while I realized, you know what Nas, when you're meant to go, you're meant to go. So the, one of the last times I went to visit him, I said, Elliot, I'm not angry anymore. It was meant to be for you to go. If you like, you could visit. I would love to have you. So two days later, two nights later, he came. He came to me in my sleep and when I saw him, it was as if he swallowed the light. For the first time, his blue eyes were shining, his cheeks were red, he was glowing from the inside. I'm like, Elliot, I've never seen him so happy in my entire life. I hug him, I miss you so much. He goes, I miss you too. And I go, as if the other spirits shouldn't know, and I said, what's it like on the other side? <laughs> the minute I said that, he took me to a children's playground, and all you saw was all these children on swings and coming down the slide, joyous, happy, full of love, full of life, smiling away, and um, very joyous, very happy, and that's it. That was the only uh, emotion these kids were having uh, at the playground. I go, oh, I get it. I get it. At this point, he said, I have to go. I said, okay. So he gives me, he goes, before I leave, he gives me a big, large paper clip. I'm like, you're giving me this paper clip? He goes, yeah, this is for you. I'm like, okay. So we say our goodbyes and we leave. At that time, I was living in Newport Beach. I woke up, I go, what an interesting dream. I still excuse it as a dream. Uh, uh, that night, I went to Los Angeles to stay with my, fam uh, my parents for the weekend. And when I left that ha my room in LA, it was a mess, it was in shambles. Apparently, the maid came and cleaned up before I came. When I came to the bedroom, everything's clean, the bed's made, everything. Right by the nightstand is that large paper clip which is something that I still have today. And uh, thank you. And when I read up on it, they would say that when spirits visit you, they give you affirmations. They give you something so you don't excuse it as a dream, so that you know it's real. He knew it was on the nightstand by my bed. And so that's why he gave me the paper clip. And the minute I saw the paper clip, I said, that was no dream. That was Elliot. So that's my experience. Thank you.